What's up and welcome back to another video. My name is Miles Away, and today we're gonna to be checking out this amazing new pedal, the Chroma Console from Hologram Electronics. Now, every time Hologram releases a new pedal, it's a big deal. Their microcosm pedal, quite literally, no exaggeration, set the entire pedal world on fire, and I think it's probably one of the most popular boutique pedals that has been released in the last five or 10 years. So now that the Chroma console has been out for several months, I wanted to take a look at it now that the hype has died down a little bit and see kind of what it is all about, whether it's worth the hype and whether or not I would recommend it to you to add to your board or to your synth rig. So quick disclaimer, Hologram did send this pedal for me to check out, but of course they have no say over the content of the video. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel, for watching my videos, and let's get started. All right, now hopefully you enjoyed that demo track. Every single effect you heard was made using only the Chroma console. I recorded everything in dry, either direct through the pedal or using it as a send in Logic, which is my favorite way to use this pedal. But before we jump to the top down view and learn about why I like this pedal and how I like to use it, I got a lot of questions from you guys on can the Chroma console replace certain pedals? Can it be the only pedal on your board? How does it do for specific effects emulating them? Well, I think it actually does really, really well for the most part. And obviously there's the caveat that you're not gonna get as many controls as a dedicated pedal where, you know, a drive pedal is gonna have six different knobs or something like a Gen Lost Mark II is gonna have six different knobs and different switches. But the actual quality of the algorithms is super high. So let's do a quick shootout with a couple of the effects. And this will also help me illustrate one of my absolute favorite things about the Chroma console, which is that every single one of these effects is stereo and it has true stereo in and stereo out. Now with this first guitar loop, I'm gonna showcase the fuzz effect, which is one of my favorite effects on the Chroma console, but listen carefully to the stereo field. That's right, this is a stereo distortion effect. Every single effect on Chroma console is completely stereo. Now, if we compare this to one of my favorite fuzz pedals, the Walrus Eons, you'll notice right away that the Eon sounds absolutely great and has a lot of control, but it's a mono pedal. So bear that in mind that every single effect on the hologram chroma console you're getting is completely stereo, which is, in my opinion, absolutely huge and really saves a lot of time and headache when making signal chains when you're dealing with something that might be mono like a fuzz pedal trying to go into a stereo reverb or trying to switch things around you really just never have that kind of headache with the virtual modularity of the chroma console and i absolutely love that for this next clip let's check out how it does for lo-fi effects which i think are one of its strengths and i'm going to shoot it out against the gen loss mark ii which is one of my favorite lo-fi pedals now you'll notice obviously the Gen Loss Mark II has a lot more controls, but we can actually get really similar tones by utilizing some of the other modules. The 
The Chroma console has two different lo-fi algorithms, which we'll check out more later, that both sound amazing. Here, I'm enabling some drive and some gesture recorded tremolo to add that lo-fi warble. We'll get into gesture more later. I don't know about you guys, but I was really impressed by how well it emulates these kind of lo-fi tones. Now, obviously something like the Gen Loss is a fantastic pedal as you get all the different tape algorithms and lots of different hands-on controls. But if you're just after that sound and you're not sure which one to get, it's pretty hard to beat the fact that you can get those lo-fi tape sounds on Chroma Console with that high quality, but then you get a whole bunch of other stuff that we haven't even scratched the surface with. The last module I'm gonna show you on its own is the reverb module, which I think while it's great, isn't quite as strong as the other ones. I would definitely recommend if there's one pedal to pair with Chroma Console, you get yourself a good dedicated reverb pedal and that setup by itself could take you extremely far. As you can tell, the Chroma Console Reverb, while it sounds lovely, just isn't quite up there in my opinion with dedicated full reverb pedals uh, like we saw, which is totally fair. I mean, you're getting so much other stuff with this. So again, I would definitely recommend Chroma Console and then a reverb, and you're pretty much set for any pedal board need. For fun, let's just showcase how powerful this thing is by basically making a chain with four boutique pedals that cost probably well over $2,000 and then remaking that same chain with Chroma Console. Well, how about that? I find it almost hard to believe how much this little single pedal can emulate in terms of a full effect chain of boutique pedals that each are masters at what they do. But that's just how good this thing is. Now let's jump to the top down view and check out how it works, some of my favorite modes and algorithms and some of my favorite ways to use it. All right, so the synth I'm gonna to use to demo the Chroma Console is the third wave from Groove Synthesis, but I'm gonna be using a really simple patch that sounds like this. It's basically just a simple sine wave with a bit of filtering and a bit of white noise. And I'm using this patch because I wanna showcase just how wild and different we can get in terms of sound design using just this pedal from a very basic starting point. So I'm not gonna go through every single one of these modules in great detail. There's already a great video from Mark Johnston that's already almost two hours long. But what I wanna show you instead is just some of my favorites and more importantly, the workflow of this pedal because that's really what makes it special. So. Let's start off with the character modules. There's our sound. So if we bring in one of the first ones, drive. Really, really nice sounding, characterful drive module. But I think where my absolute favorite one is, is this second module, Sweeten. And the others are great as well, Fuzz, Howl, and Swell, but we're gonna focus on Sweeten for now. Done subtly. 
This is just pretty much a sound better module. In fact, let's play a sequence that I made through this and we can kind of hear how this gentle saturation and compression will really just bring up the sustain, make everything sound more full and more full bodied and, and lovely. I think I'm going to keep it a bit brighter right now. The tilt, dark, and bright control, while it might seem a bit limiting, is really, really useful, and the way they've tuned each of these uh, filters, really nice. All right, let's move on to our next module, which is movement. And these are really, really fun. These are your classic doubler effects for like a chorusing, double tracking effects. Vibrato, which is my favorite. You guys know how much I love that subtle, seasick vibrato one sounds. And did I mention all of these are stereo? If I were to go and bring in the stereo spread to full, everything is still fully reacting on the stereo spectrum. I'm gonna keep this mono for now though, and we'll check out a couple of the other ones. Phaser's really cool, but I'm gonna use the pitch module. Tremolo, classic. Let's go to an octave. Really, really powerful stuff, right? I just like a little bit of pitch blended in subtly. Next up, we're gonna go to the diffusion module. And if you notice, I actually have a MIDI cable plugged in here, which is because the third wave is sending MIDI out into the Chroma console. The Chroma console's ability to take MIDI in and send MIDI out from pretty much anything and also do MIDI over USB-C is huge. It works flawlessly and it makes it really, really great as a desktop pedal. As you guys know, I produce hybrid half in the DAW but with outboard gear and having USB over MIDI, sorry, having MIDI over USB-C is a must in my opinion for any future pedals. It's just such a quality of life improvement. Got our analog delay. Let's check out the tape delay. Beautiful. But what I really wanna show you guys is the collage mode. If you like the microcosm, this is very similar to mosaic mode from microcosm, and it plays amazingly with our pitch before. Let's increase the stereo spread a little bit. Adding in some couple other notes. Just simply beautiful, right? Now, we'll go to texture, and we have a filter. Really, really useful filter. Can be high pass or low pass. I really do wish that the filter was a one separate knob that, would, that could be used anywhere else in the signal chain, so you didn't have to give up these great texture effects, because I really do love the sound of the filter but I find myself most of the time wanting to use one of the other uh, effects. We've got squash, which is like another compressor, but where it gets really interesting is these last three. We already looked at cassettes and broken, which are like our VHS tape, really like generation law style effects, incredible sounding, but a really cool one is interference. Like, come on, what? What an incredible sounding module. Interference is by far the most wild and even at a little bit of subtlety here, it just completely chops up and mangles your sound. So 
I know I got some questions about how similar it is to Microcosm and how much you could do. Microcosm is definitely its own thing and it's incredibly deep and powerful, but if you like Microcosm, then collage and interference together can get you a lot of those similar, just amazing ambient tones, right? So I'm gonna stop this sequence for a sec. So it's a good time to show you guys how to save presets. So it's an amazingly simple UI. So we just click like this. We're gonna select, oh, okay, let's go to uh, preset three. All right, and then let's leave. And now we have essentially our preset selector like this. So we could go and we could go restart to back to preset one. And we have all of a sudden just nothing. Then we wanna go back to our preset and we go here, select it again, and just like that. So I've quickly tweaked some things and we now have this sound with the fuzz and the reverb and this high pass filter. But we wanna rearrange it to get a more classic shoegaze sound of distorted reverb. So what we're gonna do, we press these two buttons and we can then choose which direction we go. So I'm gonna do reverb first and then the filter and then the character and then the movement last. And just like that, now. We've got this beautiful distorted reverb sound, it's haunting. And we haven't even used our movement yet, which is, if you remember, at the end of the chain. So let's go ahead and make a vibrato sound. Absolutely gorgeous, right? So. What if we wanted to make this a little bit more lively? Well, that's where the gesture system comes in, which again, aside from the ability to do the FX setup and change the signal flow, gesture is my second favorite thing about this pedal. So gesture is essentially like live automation for any of these parameters. So if we wanted to, for example, change the amount of vibrato. Let's start with that. So we're, we're gonna start with no vibrato. And then over time, we're gonna build up to lots of vibrato. So how we do this, we tap these two to enter gesture record, and we start to record. And you can see the light turns red. And then once we're done, we just hit exit. And just like that, we have a live automation going on for our amount of our movement effects. How about our filter? Let's automate that too. Like, wow, just, just like that, we've got this really complex moving sound. And what if we decide, you know what, we went too far, we don't like it, all we have to do is we hold these two buttons and it resets it back to how we had it before. Now, I think this UI of just basically being able to click any of these combinations of buttons and then hold them down to immediately undo everything really creates a great incentive for creating sounds and experimenting, which I absolutely love. So let's wrap things up by creating a brand new sound from scratch. If you remember, I'm gonna go into presets and I'm going to go back all the way to number one and then load it up and we're blank over our sequence here. So let's have some fun and create something really interesting using everything we've learned. I, of course, like Sweeten. It's just classic. It sounds so good. Let's do some modulation gesture recording on the movement. Just that easy, right? What about for diffusion? We haven't checked out the reverse effect yet. That's pretty cool. Absolutely beautiful, right? It's reversing it an octave up. And for texture.
I'm really liking the broken, but I want that at the very beginning of the chain. So let's do that now. Gorgeous, right? All right, so that's where I'll wrap that up for today, but how about some pros and cons? The module quality really surprised me with how high it is. I think I mentioned in the walkthrough, but some of my favorites are the texture modules with the cassette broken and interference. I also really, really love the delays, cascade and reel and reverse sound fantastic. And I found the drives surprisingly usable as well. But my favorite module by far has to be the Sweeten, as we saw in my demo. I think this is just an awesome sounding compressor and it's pretty much replaced the need for me to use a compressor pedal for a lot of my synths, especially since it's a stereo effect. All of these are stereo effects. So I guess that's my first pro is the quality of the sound overall is fantastic and you really could just get away with this and then maybe one reverb pedal like a Strymon or a Maris and that those could be your only pedals for your entire rig. But by far my favorite thing and my biggest pro about the Chroma console, which again might not be inherently apparent when you just watch demos, is the ability to just instantly rearrange the order of the effects and just totally mangle your signal chain and then record in live gestures. This is what makes Chroma console cool and if you're on the fence and you think this sounds fun, it's absolutely just as fun as it sounds and that demo track would not have ended up nearly as cool and experimental if it weren't for me rearranging the signal chain while I was playing with the sounds recording in live gestures and more. Well, how about the cons? Well, like I mentioned, this is not gonna be a replacement for my reverb pedals. I find that the space module is the weakest. It's still pretty good, but I would definitely recommend if you do like reverbs, get this and then a dedicated reverb pedal, again, like a Maris, Strymon, Empress, uh, because you're just gonna find yourself, if you're using reverb, then you can't take advantage of these really other awesome diffusion modules, and the reverb itself is just not my favorite. But I think that's where I'm gonna wrap this up for today. Again, thank you so much to Hologram for sending over the pedal. Thank you to you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.